Hey, it's Dr. Brandon Petke here. I'm with Nina. If you've been in the clinic, you know uh, Nina Shorts back in the rehab area. So anyway, I wanted to do a video. We started having a conversation and I was like, you know what? We should shoot a video on this because I think it'd be useful to several people. So what happened? Can I tell them what happened? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, over the weekend, we're gonna give you a great visual. So Nina slipped in the shower and uh, landed and uh, fell. Hurt her back pretty, um, pretty good. It's been bothering the last several days. When was that that you did that? Mm, the other day. The other day? The other day, how many days? Three days ago, four days ago, something like that. Last night. Last oh, it was last night. It was last sooner. Night. Okay, <laughs> sooner than I thought. Well, anyway, we took an X-ray um, of her, and actually, Dr. Albrock took an X-ray of her. So if you'll come in here, I want to show you what's going on in the X-ray, and then I'm going to go into why we look at somebody um, as a whole person. Um, so this is her X-ray. So you can see um, how her spine comes over here to the to the right. So as we were evaluating and looking at it. Um, it's a little bit um, probably at an angle, but anyway, when you look at it straight on, this is actually dropped down just a little bit. So this hit, this pelvis is a little bit lower than the right. And then I'm going to highlight this because it may be easier to see. So then what we did is we looked at where her legs come in, called the femur heads. So where the ball and socket joint of the hip, where that comes in and that comes in. So she, how tall are you, Nina? Five three. She's five three. Okay, so that should be two millimeters or less. She's a little bit outside that normal barrier. She's at 3.3 uh, millimeters or 3.2 um, millimeters, excuse me. Um, so what, what I was explaining to her is that with her fall, besides this didn't come from the fall, but with the fall, she um, basically, uh, we found out that she has one leg shorter than the other, which is causing her pelvis to go down, which is why her back is doing uh, what it's doing. So um, I said, hey, we need to look at getting a heel lift. And she goes, well, and then tell, me, tell, tell them what you told me. So I told Dr. Pecky that I actually have a dropped arch and I have a bunion because of it. So she's played sports uh, growing up and I go, oh, okay, that's good information to know. So, um, so then we started discussing like that. And then you also told me how you also had um, knee pain and mm -hmm. stuff, or you've been dealing with that, and shin splints. And so we had this whole conversation. So come on over here. So then I started explaining to her, actually step back. Sorry, I get the camera going back and forth. So anyway, so I started explaining to her, I was like, when you have a dropped arch, the arch should basically act as a shock absorber in our foot. And what happens is when we drop that arch down, um, you lose that shock absorption. So if you drop that arch down, you also, with the legs, her right one is the one where she has the issue, um, you drop that arch, it brings this down too. Okay, so this that's showing shorter here on the x-rays is actually due to her dropped arch. And now what she's doing now, if you'll come, come in here and I'm showing her with a model um, that whenever you take a foot and the arch gets dropped down, what happens is these toes kind of flare off. Okay, so what she, what she does is if the arch was there, she would toe off, off of that front toe. So you basically be like this. Well, what she's doing is with the dropped arch and going here, she's towing off the inside of her foot right there. So she's basically walking kind of like this. Well, you go do that, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of times. I was telling her there's a thing called Wolf's Law that whenever you put more pressure on bone, that bone, if this is the big toe, it's going to start laying down more bone and that's going to be called a bunion, right? Well, the other thing that happens is that the um, more shin splints, um, when you have sit, uh, shin splints, um, where that connects in is a bone called the navicular bone, this uh, bone right here, okay? So it's on the front of that, of that bone. And what that does is if that arch draws down and that, uh, that muscle called the anterior tibialis, think of it like a rubber band, okay? It stretches out, right? Is that gonna irritate it more or less irritation? More irritation. More irritation, we already had this conversation, you know the answers, right? And so if that's irritated, more inflammation or less inflammation? More inflammation. And what's the root of all pain? Inflammation. Inflammation, right? So she's now having this. So she's got, she's got the dropped arch that she's towing off. It's creating the bunion. She's got the dropped arch, which is putting strain on that uh, anterior tibialis, calling, uh, causing the shin splints. Shin splints. And then uh, what uh, she uh, is having is then she's, because her foot drops, if you can see down here, okay, if her foot drops, her knee goes in. So now she's going to have knee issues. Okay, and then when her knee goes in, her hip drops down, and now she has low back issues and it's all connected. So it's why in our clinic, we don't just look and get myopic at the low back pain and just do the low back pain. We look at the patient as a whole and we address them as a whole. And so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna actually get her some custom orthotics. So this is what I was explaining to her. A lot of times people will go in and they'll get 
um, uh, like Dr. Scholl's. Well, if you stand on Dr. Scholl's, okay, they, nothing against them, but they're the most popular, it just collapses down. Like it has no support whatsoever. It just collapses right underneath it. So it does nothing to support the arch. Then I'll see other uh, patients that get um, uh, cool custom orthotics and they'll get it from a store, I'm not gonna name the store, but they'll step on them and they're so rigid and so rock hard that they literally create no cushion. How the, Remember I said that the body should kind of act as a shock absorber with the arch? Well, if it's just rigid hard, it creates no shock absorption. So what you need is you need it to where it goes down, like with the pressure of your weight, and then it rebounds back up. And so what the, the company that we use that um, does true custom orthotics, we literally, um, uh, we literally, cast them in the optimal position for that arch, and then the, the cast is uh, uh, based over a broad area of the foot, the entire foot, okay? So we talked about, you know, kind of those people that do all the weights, right? And they do, on the, they do it on the nails, and they lift all this heavy weight, and it doesn't puncture their back. It's because it's spread out over a broad, um, you know, a broad area. Same thing with the arch. You want, it, you want it contacting the entire foot, okay? So if you come up on your toes, you put your arch in there, and there's a big gap. It's not doing what it what it should do. Okay, so we're going to cast her for that, and then it's going to be built specifically for her weight and her activity, uh, and so we can get her a truly custom orthotic, and it's it makes some significant changes. So maybe we'll do a video in the future of actually casting her, so you can see that. But anyway, uh, we look at patients at the full body. If you got stuff going on, uh, whether it be back pain or this, you know fallen arches or shin splints or whatever, reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you and get you taken care of. If we need to take any x-rays or anything like that, we can do that as well. So, all right, have a wonderful day.